is, if they're showing up authentically as a leader, that's how your company is going to grow. And that's when your clients are going to notice the difference. Yeah. So, can and I just talk a little bit about that, David. I've got a great model that's coming to mind that I, that I think listeners are going to love. I loved this. After 20 years of personal growth, I discovered this and I'm like, oh, that's a missing piece. Mm. It's so exciting. And I, and I use it with my clients all the time. This is called dignity humility model. And see, I'm interested in people having agency. And agency is a great word. I haven't found a word to replace it. Agency is the ability to take action and influence what's happening. Yeah. Agency is, I'm going to do something. What can I do? If you're in a meeting, you may not be leading it. Someone else might be leading it, but you can see that the energy's dropping a little bit and it might need something. Agency is, what can I do to mm -hmm. influence this? You know, you might raise an issue or you might suggest something. So dignity and humility is, is a way to recognize where you are and how you're showing up in a situation. Dignity is simply my voice matters. It's a place to stand <clears throat> where you believe your voice matters and you're willing to speak up. That's it. Yeah. An example from history is Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King my voice matters. I have a dream. <clears throat> Very leadery. Powerful place. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, uh, I, I view a piece of paper, and on the right, you've got hum uh, dignity, and on the left, you've got humility. Humility is a place to stand where all voices matter. Yeah. I really want to listen. I want to understand from you. Now, Martin Luther King might, might be an incredible leader, has the ability to listen, but he's mainly speaking. Still powerful. On the humility side, we think when we think about a, a figure from history, you think of Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. All voices matter. I'm listening. Very powerful. Now, in the middle is a nice sweet spot. You can be powerful at either end of the spectrum, but in the middle is a nice sweet spot. My voice matters and I'm listening. And from history, we think of someone like um, Gandhi. Yeah. Gandhi, my voice matters and all voices matter, right? So this is so cool because you get to, you know, you can ask yourself in any situation, where am I on this spectrum? In a meeting, you might be shut down and not speaking. Oh, I haven't talked about the shadow. So that's important. <clears throat> so those are the power places, but we can collapse into the shadow of either end. Okay. The shadow of, of dignity where you go too far would be posturing. Mm. not listening at all, dominating, arrogant, aggressive. Yeah. And I'm going to get myself in trouble here, but I'm willing to get myself in trouble. <laughs> um, a figure from history, we often talk about Hitler. who yeah. was so, so tunnel vision on, on a mission. There didn't seem to be a lot of listening, right? And a figure that I like to use today, uh, you know, whether you vote Republican or not, um, I think a lot of people might agree that Trump doesn't seem to do a lot of listening. That's not his thing. He's, he's more into like speaking. So I would say Trump uh, to me is over in the shadow of mm. dignity where he's gone a bit too far and can be very polarizing. Then on the other side, you've got people who can collapse into the shadow and I collapse a lot into the shadow of humility. This is where you're, you're not just listening to everybody, but you're over apologizing. You're feeling shame or guilt. Uh, you, you're a, a wallflower now, right? Yeah. Or a mouse. And there's not a lot of power there as well. So I love this model because I get to look, wait, where am I? Oh, I've collapsed into the shadow of humility. I'm apologizing. I'm awkward. It happened when I had people in my house. I said, yeah, you can use my house to host an event. And I spoke up and said, look, I want to ask for some things. And I realized I've collapsed into the shadow of humility because they know this model. I've collapsed. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for me to just be in my dignity and say, can you be quiet? Because I need to go and lay down and look after myself because I'm embarrassed. And ironically, I, I wonder if you can see this. Ironically, in saying that, in speaking up and speaking my truth and how I was in the shadow of humility, I brought myself back into dignity. 
yeah. and was able to say, yes, I'm embarrassed. I'm revealing what's happening and this is what I need. But I, I so that's, it's kind of a ironic <clears throat> that in saying it, naming it, I got to come back. So I'm curious what you think about, about this, what comes up for you as you hear this model about dignity and humility as yeah. a leadership tool. I think that is really interesting, actually. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> it almost goes back to your, I kept thinking about your four-step process and how you, you essentially are naming it there too, right? You have your different steps. This is how I'm going to approach the whole entire conversation. This is the framework. And I think that it's just like business. Think about, think about when you go into business, you follow some sort of business model, right? It, it may not be totally cookie cutter, but you're following something. So the same thing popped in my head in this whole humility versus dignity conversation, because you're naming it, which basically opens up the airwaves to speak in true transparency and with authenticity. So I think that's really powerful. So think about that if you're listening to this for your teams. If you simply have the conversation of the humility versus dignity, the two polar ends of the spectrum, and you can speak yourself like, hey, okay, guys, I was maybe a little bit uh, too much in my dignity in that meeting. Let's reel it in a little bit and, and let's talk, let's talk uh, uh, how we need to talk. Let's, let's kind of unwrap this a little bit. Or, hey, you know, Susan, I see you're kind of sitting in your humility a little bit. You're not saying a whole lot. Let's bring this up a notch. So I think that it can help you to have a conversation because you're naming it and it doesn't feel threatening. It just feels like this is just how we communicate in the office.